Hello and welcome to Intermediate Fiddle Lesson number 6. In today's lesson we're going to be mainly concentrating on the key of C. That's the key of C and of course it starts on the G string, third note. That's the C. That's the C on the A string, played with the middle finger. And then I slide my little finger, pinky, up to the top C. That's on the E string. If you're not too familiar with playing in the key of C, if you nip across and have a look at my beginner's lesson number five, I spend a lot of time dealing specifically with this key and I go right through it showing where all the, of the individual notes are. So if you're not too familiar, have a look at that particular video. With the key of C, I've um, got a nice tune called the keel row, which I've transposed into the key of C because I want to also illustrate to you crossbowing, where, um, what I mean by crossbowing is where the tune is played between two strings. The melody is held by the two strings so you're sort of going from one string to the other and in this instance the melody is actually played on both the E and the A string. I'll play the tune for you. It's a hornpipe from the um, northeast of England and it's called Keel Row. Three, four. the tune it's quite nice and bouncy uh, it's not played too quickly because horn pipes require the rhythm to be nice and bouncy not too quickly played so that the dancers can fit the um, the leg movements in to the to the actual dance this is the keel row so just working through um, you'll notice in um, the first part of the tune we've got two pickup notes Okay, so I'll go through the first couple of measures. Now that illustrates perfectly what I was meaning by crossbowing. The fact that we're going from one string to the other to actually play the melody. Which in fiddle playing particularly in Celtic fiddle playing, you find that in so many tunes. It's such an important feature. So I'll play it again from the top, three, four. And then we play the same thing again. And then a slight finish here. And then back to the pick up notes because we've got the repeat at the end of that last measure. Okay, so your arm is going up and down. Okay, so that might be worth practicing because 
as I say, that crops up in so many melodies, uh, fiddle melodies, certainly uh, tunes in the sort of Celtic um, style. And of course, even though this is a North of East, North East England tune, it still fits pretty well in that, that particular style. And then the B section now. Not so much crossbowing in the B section, but I thought I would add it in to give you the complete tune to work on. So starting from the top, I'll play two A's and then go on and play two B's. Okay, now let's give it slightly more rhythm. Three, four. sort of flicking the bow there to in to to give a little bit more drive and rhythm to the particular this particular tune now moving on to our next tune um, which is called the white chapel bell it's named it's a tune i've named after the um, white chapel foundry which um, i remember from many years ago in the east end of london uh, Whitechapel Bell. It's written in the key of C specifically for this les lesson. Um, I've included something called staccato notes in the third measure and those basically are notes which are played with a very sharp attack and then hardly any sustain. In other words it's you sort of straight in there and then you stop it, it, it's not a, a lengthy sustained note. It sounds a bit like this. A bit like a bullet. So it, it, this tune, I'll play the tune for you through in, entirely so you can hear what it sounds like. Three, four. That's the sort of speed and the kind of rhythm. Now I've also included the grace notes but I'll just work through the melody with you first and then I'll consider and talk about the grace notes afterwards. 
So first of all, there are no pickup notes with this tune, so it's a straight in job. So I would count it one, two, three, four, da, 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 and we'll straight in. Uh, I'll try not to play it too quickly, so you can keep up. Um, measure number two. You may notice um, there are a, a couple of quavers and then three crotchets. The third crotchet, the very last note in that second measure, there's a little line before the note and that means there's a slide. So um, it's, it's actually a C natural which is like the second note on the A string as we're playing in the key of C. So what you would do there is you would slide up from the B so that's a slide coming in on the second measure and then these staccato notes that would do fine I just sort of bouncing the note on and off the, the, uh, the bow on and off the notes. So a very quick attack and hardly any sustain. Boom, boom, boom. And the reason for these kind of notes in fiddle playing, not, I, I wouldn't know about classical playing, but in fiddle playing it's, it's to indicate rhythm. So this would crop up in a fiddle tune where you wanted specifically to indicate a particular rhythm. Um, I'm, I'm experienced with dancers and that's where you would include a staccato type note to introduce a particular rhythm or bowing pattern if the dancers were doing a particular footwork pattern. So that's why it's, it's quite useful in, um, in fiddle music to have some way of giving that sharp rhythm across and staccato notes are a good way of showing it. That's why I've included them in this tune. So let's progress. Um, I'll play through the tune with you slowly. No grace notes but we'll try and get that slide in and no staccato notes. So three, four, There's a slide. Now we repeat the same thing because there are all those repeat dots on there. the A section. One more time. Three, four. Repeat. Now the B section sounds like this. Three, four. Repeat. Oh, we don't need to repeat that because there are no repeat dots there. But I will repeat it anyway to help you play through this again. Three, four. So from the top three, this is from the A section, we're going to play it twice and then go on to the B section. Three, four. B. 
you may have noticed that the um, the bowing wasn't a nice flowing stroke. It was all, all more or less pretty staccato throughout. Um, that is because with this tune you need to get, indicate rhythm by that style of bowing. So on and so on. Now, um, the other thing I want to talk to you about are the grace notes. So we'll, we'll go through those individually and then we'll try and add them into the tune. Now the grace notes in this particular tune, um, they all follow the same pattern. Um, the first one that we encounter is in measure four. And that's basically where you hold your middle finger on the, the C natural and then you quickly flick down your finger onto the D and then release it. So it sounds in context like this. So all I'm doing is flicking my finger down onto the D, holding my middle finger all the time on the C natural, and then returning to that C. That's the first grace note. Um, the second one is in the B section, second measure. Um, that's where I'm holding my first finger on the first note of the A string, which is a B. And I'm bringing my middle finger down onto the C natural. And then releasing it immediately. That's the second grace note. And the third one is in the fourth measure of the B section. And that's the same Again, that's where I hold my first finger on the B, on the A string, and, and just flick down onto that C natural with my middle finger. Flick down and release immediately, whilst holding your first finger on the B all of the time. Moving on. The other grace note is in, let me see, in the B section, measure, oh, measure 11. Um, that particular grace note is an E. And I'm flicking up to the G, with, but basically I've got my middle finger on the E, sorry, the F. And I'm flicking my ring finger up to the G. So it's exactly the same pattern as the other grace notes. So um, I'm going to play through the whole tune and I'm going to try and illustrate those grace notes to you. Um, three, starting from the very beginning, from the A section. Three, four... from the beginning again, three, four. So that's where you would add the grace notes. Now you can um, print out this worksheet 
and you can perhaps work through those a little bit more slowly and just figure out the, um, the position that, that the fingers should be and try and to get the speed of moving your fingers so that the grace notes are hardly perceivable or can hardly be heard but they're certainly noticed which seems a strange thing really but that's fiddle music okay so the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was when you're playing a tune um, and particularly this one you can transpose you can change the key or, or rather you can stay in the same key but you can drop down an, an octave so I've tried to illustrate that by um, working out the notation for you so in the um, first part of the tune we can drop down onto the G string and there is a grace note there further confuse things with that particular grace note I decided that I would show you that you can also jump a couple of notes so I'm actually holding down the um, E and I'm hammering down my ring finger this time onto the G that's the E and that's the G so I'm doing this So it's a slightly different approach to grace notes but it makes it interesting to play and it gives it a slightly different sound. So going down to the, the C on this G string which is the third note to play this alternative version of the A part of this tune. Three, four. notice I put a slide in there you sometimes can slide rather than put grace notes in three four this time I'll put the grace note in three four I'll do that again put the slide in so you've got alternatives there so what I'll do now is I'll play this tune through and uh, second time round I'll just drop the um, A section into that lower octave three four of it is you can do really this is fiddle music so you can do what you like I'm just purely trying to illustrate different things you can try different approaches it's nice to change octaves uh, in a tune it gives a little bit of a, a relief to the listener listening to a tune if you're playing it two or three times in a session maybe even four times it's nice to change the octave um, it just makes the tune seem fresh, interesting and, and most importantly holds the attention of the listener. So that's why I've included that idea of showing you dropping an octave. Also you can take tunes and you transpose them into a different key. This is the same tune in the key of D.
you can change key, you can change octave. This is fiddle music. It's lively. It's interesting for the listener to listen to. It's fun for you to play. And that's the whole idea. So simple melodies with fiddle music are great because once you've got the melody in your head, you should then be able to transpose without even thinking about it into a different key. Now I have included the musical notation for the key of D and the key of G, but you can experiment of course. But I think that covers really everything I wanted to look at in today's lesson. I wanted to specifically concentrate on the key of C, which we've done. And then I wanted to just introduce the idea of staccato notes to introduce you to the idea of um, giving rhythm into a particular tune and indicating to the dancers when they should do a particular foot movement or whatever. Um, we also looked at the keel row, which is a hornpipe, which has a nice interesting lumpy sort of rhythm. Um, and we've looked at dropping an octave, changing key. So I, th I think that's probably enough to be getting on with now. There will be a link in the description from this video so you can get hold of these notes and either print them out or um, download them as a PDF or whatever. Okay, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye now.